Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. Um, we're going to talk about, today in this video, about how to print with jelly plates. I'm going to show you a recipe on how to make your own. You can make your own jelly plate. We'll, we'll look at that. As well as you can purchase jelly plates. And these come in different sizes, different shapes, and they're, they're pretty easy to, to find. Um, but we're going to look at what are some of the techniques you can use and how can you use this in your own art projects. Um, I think this is going to be a really fun video. So let's go ahead and get started. Here are some of the items that you're going to need to do jelly plate printing. First of all, a jelly plate. Then you're going to need a brayer. You're going to need acrylic paint. You're going to need some textures that you can put on the plate as well as paper to print on. And look at some of the beautiful textures and colors and patterns that can be achieved using a jelly plate. So let's take a look at how to make a homemade do-it-yourself jelly plate. This is an ox gelatin that I just got at the grocery store. This is a liquid glycerin. And I went to the dollar store and I just got a oh, baking pan. It cost me a dollar and I think this is maybe a 7 by 7 inch. One thing that you need to watch for is that you don't get something that's bumpy on the bottom. Um, if you use a, a pan that you already have at home, it could be metal, it can be a foil pan, plastic, glass. Um, but you need to watch that you don't have any kind of design or indentation in the bottom because that will show up on your jelly plate. So I found this paint. It's nice and smooth. It's clean. It hasn't been used. And I think this is what I'm going to try to mix the um, gelatin in. So I'm going to open up this box. And I cut it down. If you look on YouTube, you can find all kinds of videos about making these plates. And some of them talk about um, mixing alcohol with them. Some of them have really large quantities so you can make a big plate. What I did was cut this down so that I'm going to add three envelopes of the gelatin. I'm going to do it right in the pan and then it I've cut it down to where it's three packages or three envelopes of the gelatin, three-fourths cups of the glycerin, and three-fourths cup of hot water. And I've got my my um th my hot boiling water right here so first thing i'm going to do is this is six ounces so that's three-fourths cup i'm going to just pour all the gelatin in here and get all of that in there and i'm going to use my spatula to try to um mix all this up I want to make sure it's not too lumpy. The hot water, I'll add that in just a minute. So I've got my three-fourths measuring cup. I'm going to pour the hot water in here. And I'm going to add that to the mixture. And I'm going to just keep stirring. Try to get this all mixed up really well. So let's take a look look at this. It's been in the, this uh, jelly plate has been in the refrigerator and it looks like it's pretty well set up. What I did was take a knife and I went around the edges um, to kind of loosen it up. And then what I'm going to do, let's see if I can get this to pop out. Oh, it's coming out pretty easy. See if I can get it out of here without tearing it. Come on. Okay. And there we have a homemade jelly plate ready to use. When you work with jelly plates, um, you can do prints that are centered on a piece of paper and perfectly registered, or you can overlap. And it's almost, um, I, kind of like, I kind of like it when it looks like a, um, 
a quilt and when I start seeing all kinds of layers build up. I enjoy the building up of layers in my own artwork when I oil paint and I use cold wax, but this is also something you can do with the acrylics. So what I'm gonna do, my end product is going to be like a book. I've got these just, this is just copier paper, 20 pound copier paper, and it's, um, oh, what is it, 11 by 17. And I'll be able, when I fold it in half, I will end up with a nice size that could be some kind of um, journal. And we're gonna print both front and back. And I'm just gonna keep layering acrylic paint. Um, just showing you different techniques, different things that you would be able to do. And one thing that I, I will say is I always try to keep a, a little container of water handy and paper towels, or you can use wet wipes, baby wipes, whatever. But when you've got that acrylic on there, I always like to try to wash it off. Um, I've got a sage blue. That's acrylic, matte acrylic. So I think what I'm going to do is start with that at the top. And I'm going to do, ooh, let's do this. Let's do the uh, quinacridone nickel azo gold at the bottom. Roll it out, kind of blend it in there, and it's covering up the other paint that was there. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna put some of this punchinella on there. That's adding kind of a texture. I'm going to put some of these strips that came from just paper. I'm gonna make some stripes here. See what it does. Then I'm gonna take some drywall. Cut off a piece of that. Put that right there. Take my first piece of paper. I'm gonna start right here in the middle because I don't have to get it all the way out to the edges. I'm going to be overlapping. I'm going to be adding colors and creating a, a really a tougher piece of paper with all the acrylic on it. And that will be used for a book when it's dry. So here's here's the start of one right there and you can kind of you can see the textures you can see all of this in there and that that's the start. We're gonna set that one aside, peel up this, peel up these little pieces and just when I was talking about ghost prints there you have something there and I'm wondering I'm gonna do a few of these sheets front and back. So I'm kind of wondering um what happened if I did spritz that spritz it with a little alcohol? Let's just see if I can pick some of that up. some of that. The idea, and I'm going to keep working on these, I'm not going to take you through every single step, but I will come back and show you different techniques that I do, but the idea is to keep building, and I, I'm going to build all on this side, flip it over, print on the other side, and that acrylic is going to make the paper a little tougher, um, a little heavier, and I can keep adding things on top. I might even want to add um, 
a real light coat of white to take back a bright color. But the end result should be something really beautiful in a patchwork form on your, on your paper. And something that it all has a unity as a page and then when you fold it, you'll be able to see that unity go through the entire um, book. So let me work on this just a little bit and I will come back and show you some more techniques. On this one, I already had paint that had dried on my jelly plate and I put white over it, uh, heavy body white, and I'm gonna see if I can pick up, if, if having that on there will allow me to pick up some of the um, debris or some of the leftover dried paint. Sometimes you can do this and it'll give you kind of a, a, a neat looking surface. So let's just see if this works. Ah, well, it does. So can you tell that um, the blue dots, that's what I had on there, uh, it had dried and by putting the paint on top of it, it picked it up. So that's kind of a neat surface that I'm gonna I'm going to continue using here. I'm going to um, use something that um, I got this at a garage sale and it's like a textile um, stamp and it's very old and so I can use this for stamping into um, the wet paint. I can also use um, well, I've got some other stamps. I'm just going to try using this one right now, and I'll stamp into part of this and show you what it does. I'm going to take a uh, little bit of Celadon. Well, let's see. This is a Celadon Green. And Celadon Green is a nice neutral green. I think I'm going to um, I'll put a bit of the uh, Quinacridone... Um, Nickel Azo Gold on there too. And you don't always have to add two colors. I'm just trying to kind of think of um, not just solid colors so that I can, I can start building some unity. Like if everything has a little bit of a particular color in it and you, you have unity with your, with your color choices. And this is one of my favorites here. I kind of like the way it's it's going on a little differently too. I kind of like that. Okay, I'm going to take this and just press it down and it picks up some of the paint. Okay, do some more over here. And always when you're pressing into the plate, um, try not to do something really sharp that will hurt the plate. So I'm, I'm just kind of doing a bunch of different things here. I'll have to wash that off in a little bit. We'll start another another sheet with this. Let's see what we've got. That top turned out pretty nice. I like that. You can see all the patterns and everything in there. I'm going to set that with one aside and I'll use that for part of the book also. Okay, let's talk about stencils. Um, stencils are things that can be found, things that you can cut. Here, here's something that could be a stencil that is a paper doily. Um, here's something that I, I actually cut those squares out, squares and rectangles. Um, I have uh, purchased some things, like this is a circle one that this is one that's been purchased so it's like leaves if you go into a store check out things that you normally um, 
you wouldn't think of for art supplies. I showed you the drywall tape. That's perfect. You wouldn't think of that as an art supply, but you can use it for that. This was a, a mat, um, some kind of dish mat or something. I cut it up. I can use that as a stencil. Um, well, we, in, in another uh, clip, I used the a stencil with the edge of the paper that I'd torn off. This is one that I think that was something that was on, on some kind of paper product, and I just cut it off. You can tell where I cut it off in half. So I may use that as a stencil. Let's go ahead and try using a bunch of these. So there are so many things. If you go to the thrift store or if you go um, just to the dollar store, anything like that, you'll be able to really find some neat, some neat things that you wouldn't ordinarily expect and you can use them for your art. And that's the, that's the fun of doing this. It's just the experimenting. So I'm gonna take this blue, kind of this midnight blue and this cream. Notice as I roll this out, I'm trying to get a nice even coat, not something that it has big blobs of paint, but I'm trying to, to smooth this out and get it nice and even for printing. Okay, I'm going to lay this piece right here, I'm going to take, um, what else did I have? Let's do the circle stencil right here. And let's do part of the leaf stencil. I'll put that right, right there. I'm going to see what I can pick up with that. Notice how, as I pull this print, I'm rubbing into all of the crevices of the stencils just to make sure that I pick up all of the wet paint. Done enough. Let's see what happens. Ah, that's pretty cool. I'm going to lay that one aside. Pick these up. And let's see what happens if I can do a ghost print on this one. No, it's not, it's not a musical Christmas show. That happens to be my ring doorbell going off. If you heard that noise, so, okay. Let's see if this will pick up. Keep in mind, I'm not using open acrylics. I'm using the regular craft, you know, acrylics, and sometimes it dries, but that's okay, because I'm looking at, I kind of like the way it gave splotchiness in here. That was the ghost print of the other one that I just did. Okay, I'm still adding to my book pages. Um, I think now what I'm going to do is press in some texture I've got um, bubble wrap. Um, well, here's something. I can use this. This is something that came from a bag of fruit, I think. So that's got a texture to it. I'm just going to see what happens if I... I won't clean the plate off, but I'm going to add some um, Indian yellow hue and quinacridone. I'm going to roll that out and see what will happen. These are such warm colors and I'm, that I think it'll add to um, kind of a con contrasting effect since I'm using a lot of um, kind of that bluish green kind of neutrals. This will be kind of a complementary of that. And I'm just going to get a thin coat on this one. And I think I'll lay that right there. And I'll push this here. Now, the deal is, if I put the print right over it, this would block the whole thing out. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, 
I'm going to create the texture, lift these items up, and then make a print. So you see some of that texture in there? You see that? There's some texture. So I'm going to take one of my pieces that I was working on. Maybe I will just take this one and I can just do half of it on that. And then the other piece, we'll see if anything will pick up. Right here. So as I'm laying these out, that's part of the uh, covering things up, the patchwork aspect. And, you know, at first you may look and think, this is kind of ugly. I don't like the way this is coming out. But when you keep doing it, it'll come out with some neat effects. There's that right there. I've still got more places to fill. But one thing that I'm liking is um, how that's blocking out the strong line right there, but you're just getting some delicate cover-ups on here. You're getting um, some of the, the white and everything that was on that last plate is adding to what was already under it. I'm gonna try some uh, masking, and I'm gonna mask with a uh, string or cord that I have. I'm gonna mask with, um, this is kind of a, oh, something I found at the fabric store. A fancy little yarn of some sort. I'm gonna so masking means I'm gonna block something out. Um, I used I also can cut my own mask and what I use sometimes are the Tyvek envelopes that you can oh, I can buy my own sheets but you can also get the envelopes at the post office and I will cut into them and use them over and over and over again and you can tell that the the more paint that's on them it seems like the more rigid and the thicker and, you know, they don't tear. I mean, it's a wonderful little stencil to have. So I'm, we're going to try masking using some of those. Let's see what I can come up with here. What color should I go for? I'm kind of all over the place. I'm not sure what color. Let's, let's try, um, um, let's do this again. Let's do the quinacridone um, Azo Gold. And um, I'll do a little bit of the Mountain Blue. And if you'll notice some of the paints um, that I'm using, some are craft paints and some are a nicer brand, Golden. You can kind of use both, depends on what colors you see that you like. Um, they have, will have different effects, and you may like the, um, the more expensive paints. They might have a, a stronger pigment, or the others might work too. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to lay this right here. Lay this right here. Let's do the first one with just string and ribbon, and we'll see what happens. That's a long, that is a long piece of cord. I'm just going to kind of loop it around. You could just take even sewing thread. I might go over. Maybe I should grab some. Oh, here's some sewing thread. I'm going to put some sewing thread on here too. Really, really thin. And we'll see what that does. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Um, this is one that I haven't done much on the back, so I'm going to go ahead and just put some of this on the back side of that book page. We'll see what happens.
Okay, I'm going to pull that off. Look how everything kind of blocked out a lot. Then I'm going to pull all of this off and see what ghost print I can pull with this. Here's a, here's a perfect side. Here's an empty side. interesting. It left some little details in there. I'm going to go back to the the sage blue and I'm going to um, put some mask over it. I'm just going to do one color on this. We'll just make it simple. Okay, let's get this all the way out to the edge. Wipe off my brayer. I'm going to actually take something, um, you, it could be a Q-tip, it could be, this is like a, um, I think it's a chopstick, so I'm going to make some designs in here like this. Draw into it. Then I'm gonna lay this here, put this in the middle. Um, this is one that I cut out. I'm gonna put that right there. I'm gonna put that right there. And then I'm going to press some of this texture on the other parts of it. And I'm going to come in with, let me grab the other piece down here. I'm going to do this side. So that's given me some shapes in there. And if I take this off, take these pieces off, I'm going to end up with what we were talking about with a ghost print. And we're going to see how that works. We'll just put this on a, another sheet. It's probably starting to dry a little bit. We'll see how well it picks up. So it's the start of, you can see some, it's picking up some of the um, quinacridone gold that was in there. I'm going to keep adding and layering on top. Okay, we're going to work on using uh, open acrylics. And I've got different colors here. Um, I might use a blue with this so it'll show up and you can see it a little better. Open acrylics are acrylics that um, ha they stay wet longer. So that means that you don't get the, all the blotchiness. Like what I was trying to achieve and what I'm working on with the book is that it might look like it's weathered, okay? And so a lot of that paint that drives, dries, it will um, it'll pick up in a different way than open acrylics will. Now, if you don't have open acrylics and you don't want, I'm gonna maybe use this one, Burnt Sienna, and you don't want to buy any, you can also take the acrylics you've got um, and add a glazing or a matte medium. You can buy one tube of um, an extender and you add that to your paint and it will keep it uh, wet longer. Now, in, since it keeps it wet longer, I went and found a few leaves 
outside. And you can see on the back, you've got your veins and all that on the back. Well, I want to try to pick that up on the ghost print. So I'm going to, um, ooh, let's use, let's use ultramarine blue. And I'm also going to try some lace. I've done this with lace and you can pick up some real delicate, um, old patterns with the laced, lace. And with this, you know, I'm going to just add a thin coat. I'm not going to make this thick. And you notice how I've got my plate, my plate has been washed off, cleaned off. So it's pretty clean. And I'm doing just a, I'm going to try to do just a light coat. You can always add more. You know, if you look and say, ah, it's not quite enough. I'm going to add a little more over here. You could always do that, but if you squeeze out too much, it's kind of hard to keep, to get it off, so. I just want a nice, even coat over the whole plate. Okay, so now I'm gonna, um, now let's see, I'm gonna take the, the lace, I'm gonna lay a strip of lace right there. And I'm gonna put a strip of lace up there. And I'm gonna just lay down some leaves. This is a great composition, by the way. I'm just kind of putting some stuff on here, to see what will happen. Um, what's an, where's another piece of, oh, I know, I'm going to take this head up, this string, this yarn had a nice feathery, uh, you know, a little texture to it. I'm going to put that on there. Another thing you could use is a feather, which at this point, I don't think I even have one, but I've done it to where you can get some beautiful, beautiful um, veins in the feather and everything. So let's put this on here. I'm going to get a fresh piece of paper. And this is going to be my, not my ghost print, this is my first print, so things are going to be blocked out. We'll do them side by side, how about that? This is going to be the print. This is the first print. I'm going to take all of this off. I can't seem to get it off. There we go. Take that off. Take this off. And then I'm going to, I can tell the paint this is still wet because it's kind of glossy. So I'm going to make the ghost print and the ghost print should pick up all those little details. did. Can you tell that? Can you see the lace? Do you see the veins and the flowers? Um, and that is still damp. This is still damp. It doesn't take long for it to dry, but it takes a little longer than your regular craft paint and craft acrylics. So it depends on what materials you're using and what effect you want. If you want to pick up details or not, open acrylics may be the way to go. Let's take a look at our uh, homemade jelly plate. This was uh, the one I made, and I it's been sitting in the it's been sitting in my studio. It hasn't been refrigerated, and it seems to be just good to go. So this looks like a good one. What I've done is put it on a piece of plexiglass just to kind of stabilize it, so I can hold it, pick it up, and then I put blue tape right here that if I want to register my paper, what I have is some white paper that if I put my uh, paint down and then want to register it, I can ang um, take the corners right there and then lay it down and print. So the next time around, hopefully that will 
uh, it'll register. It'll keep it from being all over the page. Now it's not going to be perfect, but that's just a simple way of doing that. I could have done it. I could have done it from this side. I kind of did it from the bottom, and we'll see how that works. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just show you a little bit about layering. We'll pull three passes through the um, with the plate, and I'm going to start with a. A light color first. I'm going to start with a little yellow. And I'm using the open acrylics. Just because as I'm talking, I'll just have more time. I do notice with this handmade um, jelly plate, it rolls on a little differently. I don't think it's a little softer. It's a little bit softer than the one that I purchased, but it's still workable, so it's not a, still works, same thing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is start with, um, I'm just gonna start with a straight layer of, of yellow. Maybe I will put, stamp some dots, some little dots on here. And I won't mask anything out yet. Oops. Okay, there's the first pass with yellow. I'm gonna get a paper towel. get some of this yellow off. If I had wet wipes, this would be great, and I just am out of them, so but I'm trying to get some of this off. I'm going to start next with um, uh, a red. This is the red light. I'm curious as how long they said this was supposed to be a permanent plate, just like the kind you buy, because it's got the glycerin in it. And I'm very curious to see, you know, if a couple weeks down the road, a month down the road, if it still is uh, workable. So what I'm going to do on this, I think, is put, I found this stencil. I'm going to lay the stencil on there. And guess what? String got in there. <laughs> okay. How did I do this? Rub it really good. So I, you understand kind of what I'm doing. I'm using the masking. There will be yellow showing because the stencil is masking. Okay, so that's that. That's not too bad. That um, it lined up. Okay. Take this off. I want to pick up that paper. I'm going to do another another sheet. And do a ghost print. That can be another one that I work off of. One thing I noticed with the with the uh, homemade jelly plate is when you push on it, the edges get a little misshapen. It's a little softer. I can push it back into shape, but it's a little softer than the one that you buy. But that's okay. Now, what should I do on, I was gonna add some blue. Just use my primary colors. Uh, I wonder, what would happen is if I just took this and turned it a different direction. I might try that just to see what happens. Because, you know, like I said, this is all experimenting. This is Thalo Blue. Once again, I'm using the open acrylics. Just 
happens to be. Phthalo blue is very strong. It's a very strong hue. And so I want it to take some of that off to be kind of light. It'll overpower everything else. So how did I do it before? I had it on here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip it around like like this and put it on there. So you can see how the colors um, start blending. That blue, turn, phthalo blue mixed with the yellow showing through, it starts looking kind of green. And so you can get a lot of different um, uh, colors that you mix. So if you, if you, you have to be careful that you aren't just mixing mud, but you could do something in the cool, cool shades, warm shades, um, however you want to do that. And I'm taking this off. I want to do the ghost print on top of this one and see what happens. One thing that I should tell you, and I didn't do it, was I should have labeled on the back what was the top and bottom of the print. So when I, when I line it up at the bottom here, I know I'm doing it correctly. Oh, this looks pretty good, though. So you can kind of see how... <clears throat> the two ghost prints work together. Right. Um, I'm going to show in this example, this is a some watercolor paper I got um, just at the craft store, art store, and it's 140 pounds. So that is going to mean that it's a little heavier. Um, it's going to absorb more of the ink or the paint that I put on. And I'm going to use my larger... Um, was the eight by 10, I think, jelly plate. And this is one that I pre-purchased. What I'm gonna try to do here is to put some paint on. I'm gonna do just a, a kind of a cream color on here. And I want it to be juicy. I'm gonna add some alcohol to it. And I put some, this is just rubbing alcohol in a um, that you buy just at the CVS or grocery store, or whatever. And I'm gonna, I'm trying to make this juicy because I want it to kind of sink into the paper, and it's gonna, it'll come out kind of like watercolor. Um, so I'm being, so this is like juicy, 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 and I'm, I'm taking it to all the edges here. Then I'm going to take. Um, this right here is Distress Spray. It's a spray stain. And I'm actually gonna spray some on there, see what happens. Gonna use the rusty color and then maybe a little green in there. Now, I'm still gonna spray more. What I want to happen is the crazing. Okay, look when I, can you see that when I'm spraying that alcohol, how it starts separating the acrylics? And that's kind of what I'm wanting to get, to have kind of that um, old world chipped look to it. So I'm gonna lay this on top, press it down. You can use um, your hands just to run over it. Just when you're doing that, make sure that you're getting all the edges. I'm pressing it down, letting it absorb a little bit. Ooh, I can smell that alcohol. I feel like I'm in a hospital room. Okay, I'm gonna peel this up. You can see that this type of print has a watercolor effect to it. Here's something that you can do on any I'm going to do it on this particular print, but you can do it on any of your prints. This is a, 
uh, Posca pen. And I'm gonna use white because I think it'll just nicely show up down here at the bottom of the, the uh, picture without being too prominent. Um, you can get these in different colors. I'm using a white and it is, uh, it's like a medium tip, I think. But this is acrylic, this is acrylic paint. So I'm gonna do a simic writing, which is nonsense. I'm not really writing words. I'm just making marks that kind of resemble writing. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put yep, this on the bottom. And I didn't register that and I should have, but. Okay, can you see how that showed up just ever so slightly like a texture? If I wanted to, um, Let's say I'm going to come in and I'll show you how it, you can, I'll use black this time. And, oh, I'm going to just put some dots here. For fun. So I'm going to write something. I'm going to flip this over so I can use the clean end here. Um, I want something to print on my, my uh, piece to where I can read it. So let's say I'm just going to take the term, the end. You know, I can write that heavy enough. Just writing with pencil. And I am using tracing paper. Then what I want to do is turn it upside down because with the tracing paper, that means I can see it, see through it. So I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to put it under my plate. I'll print uh, on this one at the end. So I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to write it backwards. See what it looks like. Okay, I didn't write it very eloquently there. It's kind of shaky, but you can see it still looks like it's printed, and at least you can read it now. So if you want to do words that you can read, make sure you write them out on tracing paper, or something you can see through. Flip them over and write them backwards on your print on your printing plate, and that will uh, means they will come out correctly to read. Let's paint directly onto the jelly plate. Um, I did that, on, these are some of the pages I'm still working on with my book, but I painted circles uh, and I pressed them on there so they still have that, the printmaking monotype look to them. Um, you can, you, you know, if you had a picture, an image underneath your jelly plate, let, let's say it was a flower or something pretty simple without a lot of detail, but you could take your acrylics, put the picture under it, take your acrylics and actually paint on the top. If you're doing that, I would say use the open acrylics to stay um, wet a little longer or, or do the additive, the um, extender to your paints. But paint your scene and then press on top and you end up with a monoprint um, where you've actually painted from a photograph if you want to or a drawing. This one I'm just doing, I'm just going to do patterns. And 
and something very simple like that. And I think I will put it on. What side will I put it on? I got all these. I got four papers front and back. Oh no, I've got five. Oh wow. I did more than I thought. Let's put on this. Let's put these right there. So you see how I'm using the plate, but I'm not having to ink the whole thing. So that starts adding some interesting patterns on top. Maybe I can still do that. Right here. Yeah, you see how that adds just some interesting patterns that have texture to them? Here are the basics of how to make a photo transfer from a magazine with using your jelly plate. That you first need your jelly plate, obviously, and you need to find a high contrast image in a magazine, something, the, a magazine that has a glossy paper to it. It could be anything that's high contrast, words, um, any kind of high contrast image. So what you're gonna do is take, I just use a regular um, acrylic paint. I think on my example that I'm gonna show you next, I use a Payne's Gray. Roll it out a very, very thin layer. You take your image and face side down, you put it on your plate and you make sure you burnish out all of the air bubbles. You peel it off and then you let that dry. Let it dry totally. Then come back in and use a contrasting color. And I used, um, I believe I used a dark Payne's gray. And then I came in and I used a titanium white. It could be any other color, but as long as there's some contrast with the colors. Then you roll a nice even layer on top. You press your paper down before that paint dries. You burnish it, and when you peel it up, it should transfer. It should pick up the image that was on the plate from the magazine and transfer onto your print. So let's see how that works. I use some words in, in my example. For this um, image transfer, I'm going to use a magazine picture that has high contrast letters and words. And I'm not using open acrylics. Instead, I'm going to use just regular golden fluid acrylics. I've transferred the image to my jelly plate um, and I am now gonna cover it. it it's dry and I'm now gonna cover it with a uh, heavy body white acrylic. And I'm gonna make sure I get a nice even coat um, on top of this. And like we did before, the um, paint should pick up the image transfer that's on the jelly plate and we should get a nice print of this. I'm printing on a charcoal gray heavy cardstock and I'm pressing real firmly on all the surface so that it transfers. And here we have the final print. I think that turned out pretty good. Here's something I wanted to show you. If you are uh, writing with the Posca pen um, and you're doing a whole lot of mark making on your jelly plate, well, you're gonna notice that it dries pretty quickly. Now, if you're doing just a mark or two, that's great. You could go ahead and press your, your print on there and pick it, up, but pick it up. But if it's dried, the one way that you can get a transfer is by adding a little bit of matte medium. Um, I just use golden matte medium and it's low gloss and it's a acrylic extender. So this is something, I'm not gonna put a whole lot on here, but we're gonna do kind of a, a layer pickup. Let's see if I got enough there. Make sure that the, the pen marks are dry. And then we're gonna roll this out over the whole piece. And this is going to be a clear background. So if I just want my um, marks to show up without another color behind it, I use this just like I would use acrylic paint. Okay, so let's press this on. Um, let's press it on right 
right here and we'll see if we can pick something up. Okay, can you see that? This is where it just subtly picked up some of those marks that I made, yet the rest of the colors of my page are showing through because I used a clear medium instead of an opaque paint. Here's the journal that I completed made from the printed sheets I was working on in the video. As you can see, the pages have um, continuity with color and also a patchwork uh, organization of the prints and how I place them on the page. I've stitched the book with pamphlet stitches and then created a closure to um, using fabric scraps to mimic the patchwork theme. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned some jelly plate techniques that you can use with your own art projects. Like I said before, there are lots of possibilities to explore with jelly plates, whether you make your own or purchase your own jelly plate. Have fun!